Hello, this is Adil bringing you an intermarket analysis uh, review or video of uh, the European markets for the 11th of May 2015. Okay, so uh, the fundamentals as always, uh, we have number one, Grexit concerns that will be dictating dominating price action uh, from the uh, from the get-go, uh, given the fact that uh, Mr. Shawwell has had some comments again over the weekend with regards to a potential, uh, uh, potential default uh, risk, uh, certainly been heightened and increased although they are trying to uh, alleviate those concerns with uh, with potential bullish remarks of reaching a deal as well. Uh, I think we've been at this, uh, it's almost like Groundhog Day now. Uh, we seem to be reading the same ha headlines, uh, statements and counter statements and so on and so forth. Uh, obviously the latest round of events was the IMF, uh, obviously potentially defaulting and not accepting the Greek reform proposals and so on and so forth. So certainly seems to be the game of chicken being played on both sides or even the IMF has joined in now uh, along with the Germans and obviously the, Euro the rest of the European members so uh, given the fact that it's taken so long to get to a deal um, and given the fact that uh, according to Cathy Leanne there's less than 5% of, of a deal being done on Monday uh, given the fact that we have the uncertainty still in the background that certainly is interpreted as a risk of a scenario okay then we have the uh, Euro USD rising uh, although I think that has come to an end to a large extent but the damage has been done because that will obviously affect uh, the export uh, and the numbers that have been coming through have been relatively weak because the euro certainly has bottomed and started to move higher uh, I mean if you bring up a simple you chart of the euro USD because this whole market now really is is trading on the euro USD so let's just bring up the euro USD because the whole market is trading inverse to it uh, for our chart as you can see here pivot low was put in uh, on the 13th of uh, March obviously reaffirmed in April and the market obviously from May onwards the euro certainly has been rallying and the European markets have obviously come in under uh, intense pressure as you can see here the euro USD started to fall um, and uh, from the 8th of May onwards and obviously European markets started to uptick ever since then so it's an inverse relationship yes the, the relationship does break down there are divergences and obviously the markets can converge again but it's certainly something to notice and pay attention to especially when the euro starts to fall sharply or the euro starts to rise sharply and obviously uh, if you are a trader of the European equities and you do need to be aware of the US dollar and the implications that economic data over uh, in the states uh, and the result uh, and the impact it can have on the euro USD which in turn has an impact on the European equities hence a reason why it's been very hard to read um, from uh, from a traders perspective anyway okay so we start the week afresh and we shall see how it plays out okay so keep the euro USD at the back of your mind and keep it on a radar keep it on a 10 60 4 hour daily chart etc whatever it's your preferred time frame is uh, and uh, adjust accordingly but I can't stress the, f the importance uh, of the euro USD. Remember when QE1 in America came out, whenever the dollar fell, the market rose. QE1, same concept. QE3, same concept. Only until the tapering occurred and uh, the market obviously uh, diverged away from the euro USD or the dollar itself did the markets totally ignore that. Uh, now, obviously, a strong economic data means stronger economy and the markets generally tend to move higher with it unless or but then you also have the caveat of the uh, potential hike in rates which being negative and that opens up a big can of worms itself um, so how do we interpret that again multiple interpretations into strong economic data means that we're going to read raise rates if so then obviously that can be potentially negative for the markets uh, again it obviously is strong growth is that good for the markets etc so again that's debatable but at this very moment in time, we're focusing on European equities, and it's all about the Euro USD. That's basically what I will say for now. Okay. So the other factor again was Yemen geopolitics. So keep an eye on the situation in Yemen. Okay, and obviously news flow and economic data will will dictate the movement uh, going forward. Now, from a technical perspective. Okay. Let's have a look at the technical perspective. Let's start off with German DAX. Okay, so daily chart of the German DAX, we have the retest of the HNS neckline. Therefore, uh, the whole of Europe now is at resistance from my perspective. Okay, yes, we have this Chinese rate cut. We'll see and assess and find out from the futures market whether or not we gap higher. We'll find out from the Asian markets whether or not we uh, obviously uh, close lower or higher. Uh, the markets, if I just bring up my indices data, the Asian markets, you had the uh, the Nikkei barely higher okay uh, we do have negative comments by the way with regards to the Japanese Nikkei given the fact that uh, 
the policy maker there downplayed any further QE, so that's net, net negative, and that should have a, a bearish impact on the Nikkei. Okay, so keep an eye out for that. Also, the the yen chart as well. If I just bring up the chart of the yen, where are thou? Where are thou? Here we go, yen. Uh, we are coming into support for the yen on a daily chart. So again, that is bearish for the Nikkei. And the four hour chart certainly has made a base. Again, it's bearish for the Nikkei. And the four hour, a 60 minute chart, you can see this clearly. We are looking at a higher low and potential move higher because you have this gap to be filled here. And um, you have a gap just above. Okay, just draw that in there. And then you have this gap here. Okay, so and then you also have a gap up here. So multiple gaps above for, for the for the yen to close. So this is a chart of the yen, the DJFXCM yen chart. You can see here we've made a base, no lower lows, looking for a higher low. And if, if the ren yen is rising, do you think that it signifies risk on? No, it signifies risk off. Remember, three currencies that money generally tends to uh, pivot towards the, the Swiss, France, Swissy, the uh, the yen and the dollar so if the yen is starting to appreciate what do you think that means for the US markets it's very bearish okay so watch out for that okay so going back now to our markets okay so German DAX and we're retesting the H&S neckline on the daily chart so therefore one would presume that's a bearish uh, situation a scenario okay 60 minute charts you have resistance in this zone here so uh, you have resistance previous support equal resistance and then horizontal resistance here you have a diagonal trend line resistance as well so multiple areas of resistance around the 11740 11780 11700 anywhere in this region solid solid resistance on the 60 minute chart okay let's go to the cac now for the european market let me just bring up the CAC. Here we go. Okay. So if I start with the daily chart, we look at your large time frames first and foremost. Okay. So we popped. Impressive pop. Let me just get rid of this for now. Okay. So, yep. Impressive pop on the French CAC. Into the 5090 level or 5090 region. Okay. You are coming into resistance here on this right and left hand side. So certainly observe and watch out for that. You're taking the pivot high, take it to the pivot low, and you are into the 50 to 61 percent resistance. So again, potential resistance scenario. Then you do have the whole previous support equals resistance around 5130. So this 5090 to 5130 certainly certainly a solid solid resistance for the French CAC. Okay, uh, 60 minute chart. Obviously we have thrusted higher, which is very very impressive. Broken up this bearish channel here. Okay, so. All you can see now is horizontal resistance in this zone here, which is 5100 up to the 5130 level. So there, there, there is your key level or key levels of resistance for the French CAC. Okay, so definitely coming into resistance now. The euro stocks bring up the chart of the euro stocks now. Here we go. Go to a daily chart first of all. Okay, so euro stocks we have this HNS formation. We haven't uh, read well. We haven't approached the neckline as of yet. Okay, but certainly needs to be respected. The pivot high was uh, three 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 eight forty. Pivot low was uh, three seven seventy. So you're looking at forty to seventy. You're looking at around seventy points. So you're looking at three thousand um, uh, level here. So three six seventy to three eight thirty. Sorry. Okay, so you are looking at a, uh, I mean, 3840 really, okay, and um, so the potential level on the downside, I mean, we haven't hit that yet, I'll just calculate that for you, so 3840 minus 3670, you're looking at 170 points, you're looking at 3500 target, so the HNS was uh, potentially hit and complete uh, at this pivot low, which is the gap level, uh, around the 3490 level on the uh, Euro stocks. But for now, uh, even though the HNS has, has been completed, then one would presume that uh, we are looking at a potential pullback for a short uh, on the Euro stocks. And uh, you can certainly see here that we have or are approaching the uh, 50 to 61% Fib 
resistance and potentially testing the re previous trend line okay so it would be it's very hard for me to justify a further move down or a substantial move down uh, but for now uh, what I will do is I'll get rid of the HNS okay all I can do is use this previous diagonal trend line as resistance line and you are into the fib 50 to 61 percent resistance zone for now okay so you're looking at lower lows lower highs the markets failed to make higher highs and higher lows and now we're looking at lower lows and lower highs okay for now that's what we presume okay going to a 60 minute chart of the euro stocks okay so again we have a key uh, zone here okay so you have a resistance zone here at 3655 okay you've got a resistance zone here at 3670 3680 so those levels act as solid solid resistance going forward okay so again euro stocks into resistance now i can look at the FTSE mib uh, again 60 minute chart showing me resistance uh, bring up a daily chart okay lower lows lower highs that's what we presume for now given the fact that the market has failed to make a new high okay so again you can use your fib line take the pivot high take it to the pivot lower into that 61 to 70 percent resistance so therefore looking for a potential move lower okay s p europe again 60 minute chart is into resistance as you can see daily chart if i shift towards that you are looking at h and s formation uh, if you take your pivot high to the pivot low you're looking at 50 to 61 percent retracement resistance we've broken out the bullish channel therefore potential move would be down okay so that's basically how we're interpreting the uh, situation at present. The German DAX is into resistance, CAC is into resistance, Euro stocks into resistance, and the movement obviously will be based on the Euro USD. Okay, and that's going to be quite important and quite crucial. Also, the news flow and obviously the situation in China, but the European markets certainly seem to uh, have bitten off more than they can chew. And uh, short term resistance for now. I don't want to call a potential move lower here on the Euro, Euro European equities. Why? because of the QE uh, obviously uh, backdrop and uh, central banks dictating and, and, and supporting the markets uh, potentially to move higher okay so never find central banks but for now as a day trader certainly are into a potential uh, juncture where we are going to see resistance given the fact that I've even given my video on the US markets and they're into resistance UK markets into resistance that adds more credence and more credibility and more support to my theory that the, US, Europe, the markets are into resistance and are looking for a pullback the uh, biggest variable over the weekend is a Chinese rate cut and we shall see how that has an impact in the Asian markets and then react accordingly okay folks risk on risk off wax on wax off goodbye now